Hey guys, time for Weekly Weird News. So it turns out while we were putting together this week's Tech News Day and focusing on boring shit like tax dodging schemes used by multinational tech companies and Russian government funded social media election trolling, we missed out on a real news whopper about Facebook. They've finally done it. They have cracked the code to definitely stopping revenge porn, the despicable practice of spreading someone's personal nude photos, usually an X, in order to hurt their reputation and cause them emotional distress. The solution? Send nudes to Facebook. What could go wrong? A lot, actually, but the plan, it's technically sound. Basically, if nude photos of you exist and you're worried about them someday getting posted to Facebook by someone you've shared them with or someone who has gained access to them, the only way Facebook can ensure that those photos can never be posted onto their platform is to first know what those photos look like. And the only way for that to happen is for you to voluntarily upload these photos. Yeah, obviously. it's like the same way like police drug dogs. How do you think they know what cocaine smells like? Just gotta give them a little sample. Now we know. You would assume by this point that Facebook would be able to analyze uploaded photos and say, that's a penis. Or, that's a naked woman. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Just ban all yeah. nudity on They don't need to know Facebook. what it... I don't know. I'm What's... with you here, yes. It's... I, our algorithm needs to make sure that that mole is attached to the hip bone of that vagina, and that can identify it via algorithm. There's a guy on Facebook who just has nudes printed out on a wall. <laughs> He's just tying string around, like, <laughs> birthmarks and stretch marks. Clearly this is a pregnant woman's belly. Not a big nipple. Yeah. But yeah, come on, guys. You can trust us. Has Mark Zuckerberg ever done you wrong? Come on. So anyway, yeah, Facebook insists that this new service, which is rolling out first in Australia in partnership with the Australian government, is totally safe. Yes, yes, you're uploading potentially damaging nude photos of yourself to a faceless corporation, but they pinky swear that it will only ever be looked at by an AI to make a digital footprint and the actual file that you've uploaded through the internet will not be stored anywhere so no one's looking at your nudes guys calm down let the robot look at your dick you know who this is gonna be great for pornography companies protecting their copyright that's true yeah. uh, uploading hours of pornography mm -hmm. and pornography related images yeah. i mean that's what youtube uses for non-porn videos it's gonna be great for them Content larry ID. flint is very happy about this <laughs> i'm larry flint it's a good impersonation. <laughs> I almost thought Elliot was gone for a second. Uh, anyways, uh, this is all except uh, according to at least one digital forensics expert that Motherboard talked to, Leslie Carhart. They say it's not really that simple. She said, quote, yes, they're not storing a copy, but the image is still being transmitted and processed, leaving forensic evidence in memory and potentially on disk. My specialty is digital forensics, and I literally recover deleted images from computer systems all day, off disk and out of system memory. It's not trivial to destroy all trace of files, including metadata and thumbnails. So yeah, using this new feature does require you to trust that Facebook employees aren't the type of people to use recovery tools to find files that have been technically deleted but aren't actually gone, which, okay, probably something that you could safely assume, but using the words probably and assume when talking about the safety of nude photos of you that you just uploaded to the internet, it is probably, we assume, not enough reassurance for a lot of people. Yeah, and you're dealing with employees of the company. Now, I thought it was funny that a Twitter employee deleted Donald Trump's account on the way out, but imagine if that employee that was leaving was like, you know what, I'm gonna take half the nation's naked pictures with me uh, yeah. as I leave. Yeah, it, it, uh, yeah. Trust is a funny thing. Trust. Anyways, I can't wait to see the new uh, like thing that you have to click where it's like, acknowledge all these terms and conditions. Mm -hmm. Uh, back to the real story here. Motherboard, they reached out to Facebook for more details on how all this works, and the more we hear about this, the more, surprise, absurd it gets. It turns out, rather than using some sort of secure website or page specifically for uploading your nudes, to use the feature, you have to use Facebook Messenger to start a conversation with yourself, send yourself a photo, and then flag the photo as a non-consensual intimate image. This won't get abused at all. <laughs> By trolls on the internet. Uh, the photo is then automatically blurred to some degree and sent to a member of Facebook's community operations team who looks at it and manually confirms that the image is in violation of Facebook's policies. So, yeah, a human is actually looking at the photos. I mean, it's blurred, but if it's, I don't know, a big close-up of your dick or your boobs or something, 
they're going to have a pretty good idea what your dick or boobs look like. On the other hand, if your pick is, uh, I don't know, say a really wide shot featuring you standing off in the background in the distance with your dick out, surrounded by waifu pillows, a Facebook employee might not be able to see through all the blur that anything here is a myth. They could just assume it's a false flag. And then, sure as shit, there you are on the internet with your dick out next to a bunch of waifu pillows. Mm-hmm. There's also the fact that you have to start a conversation with yourself to get this all started. So we estimate there is a 100% chance that at least one idiot is going to accidentally send their news to someone else in their friends list with a similar name, thus defeating the purpose of all of this. But like, what if it's a picture of like, like jizz all over someone's, that's like, true. like tummy? Yeah. Like that's not naked, but is and someone it, from it Facebook gonna have to- conditioner. ID? Yeah, is someone from Facebook gonna have to be like, hey, yeah, that's jizz. That's jizz all right. Time, like you can't really blur it and then send it to them like that. It's true. It's true. And what about face jizz? Yeah, a lot of face jizz out there. Lots of face jizz out there. You see, it's flawed immediately. Yeah. The, the, the Facebook thinks that these people are all le leading some vanilla sex life. Yeah, they're gonna. They're in for a surprise. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh my god. And Mark, I, like, get over here. The background checks that their employees are gonna have to go through. Meanwhile, YouTube can't even fucking non-demonetize things correctly. Also, yeah. Even if they do get a, a top team of people on this, it's gonna be just like, um, was it Google that had that team of researchers in charge of finding child porn who all like lost their fucking yeah, minds? Yeah, they're all like, <laughs> like, this job is killing me. Yeah. I have to look at awful things all day long. Yeah. It's, it's what a weird world. Anyways, the whole process requires a lot of faith, but then again, not, not to be those guys, but so does sending nude photos of yourself to another person. You're taking a risk in both cases, and at least with Facebook, Mark Zuckerberg isn't going to turn into a vengeful prick when you spurn his love and start hanging out with Snapchat more often. What does he have that I don't have? You fucking bitch. If you don't love me, tell me, <laughs> tell me why he does different, and I'm gonna go do the exact same thing. I'm only posting your nudes so we'll get back together. The logic is sound. <laughs> just be smart out there, kids. That's all you can say. Uh, just like how the only truly 100% surefire way to for surefire way to avoid an STD is to never ever have any kind of sex with anyone, and that includes kissing. That's the only 100% surefire way to avoid having your nudes leaked. It's just don't take any nudes. Yeah, and don't let anyone else take nudes of you, mm -hmm. and don't ever be don't naked. Don't ever appear on camera. And don't ever be naked. They can either. Photoshop your face onto uh -huh. a nude. Yeah, I can do. I'm pretty good with Photoshop. Yeah, I'll Photoshop your face onto a nude, and your life is ruined yeah, unless you pay me. Before Bitcoin. I send my nude to Facebook, I'm gonna stretch my penis out to be three feet long. Whoa! Hey, hey. look, it's that guy with oh, the big dick. Oh no! Don't leak my nudes. <laughs> oh no, they did it. Why now everyone it? knows I have a monster dog. Well, they knew before because of my big dick toilet. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> why? Why does the bowl of your toilet go all the way down to the ground? I mean, well, you, you see, make up your own conclusion. When your dick's as big as mine, it drags. You need the water level to be. A bit lower, mm -hmm. or else it dips. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> uh, you know, actually, though, better yet, better than avoiding all of that, just uh, the best way to avoid damaging your reputation is just have no real friends or acquaintances at all to begin with. Yeah, then can't, you can't share anyone with you. Yeah, can't hurt your social standing if you don't have any social standing. Correct. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that, of course, would be a profoundly lonely way to live, but. Over in Japan, the capital of loneliness, they came up with solutions to this long ago. Mm -hmm. No girlfriend? Just go down to a maid cafe and get waited on like you're the wealthy husband of some hot stay-at-home wife. No boyfriend? Well, butler cafes are basically just gender swap maid cafes mm -hmm. for little old ladies. Are you a little old lady having trouble getting back in the dating scene? Didn't just pay some young hunk an hourly wage to hang out with you and say nice things to you. Hell, Japan even has services that let you take naps with beautiful women. No touching, though. And uh, you can also rent ninjas or old men for some reason. There you go. Yeah. There's no real surprise that you can also rent out fake friends and acquaintances. That should be the next logical step. Mm -hmm. it's, it's actually pretty tame by comparison. This week, an article in The Atlantic highlighted the growing industry of hiring actors to pretend to be people that you know. Now, speaking specifically with Ishii Yuichi, founder of Family Romance, a company who has been dealing in this very specific business for eight years, they had this conversation. Now, he says that he got the idea when a friend of his, a single mother, asked him to pretend to be her husband at an interview for a private school, since discriminating against single parents is apparently a thing over there. So he started his business, and his first client was, again, a single mother whose 12-year-old daughter was being bullied at school for not having a dad. Yuichi was hired to be the girl's father for social occasions, and uh, he has continued to do so over the years, saying, 
quote, I've acted as the girl's father ever since. I am the only real father that she knows. And that is not an exaggeration. Apparently for this specific client, he's not just fooling her judgmental classmates and teachers, he's actually fooling the girl. She just graduated from high school and still believes that Yuichi is her real father. This is some Black Mirror shit. I don't like it. And you know, based on statistics, her father probably died from working too hard and then committed suicide. <laughs> or from not getting up from playing video games. Get the deep vein thrombosis and a blood clot. <laughs> my, favorite, my favorite instrument is the deep vein thrombosis. The second you get up, the clot goes right to your heart, you drop dead. That's the instrument that makes the sound that goes boom ba dum ba dum ba dum thrombosis. Yeah, I think you're right. Yeah. Uh, anyways, it seems <laughs> Yuichi and the girl's mother plan to keep this ruse up for as long as it takes or until her bank account runs dry. <laughs> yes. Asked for how he'd feel if she discovered the truth, he said, I think she would be shocked. If the client never reveals the truth, I must continue the role indefinitely. <laughs> if the daughter gets married, I have to act as father in that <laughs> wedding. And then I have to be the grandfather. So I will. I always ask every client, are you prepared to sustain this lie? It's the most significant problem our company has. <laughs> What the fuck? <laughs> I mean, at least he's going above and beyond. That is customer That's service. That's that fucking method That acting. is in customer service. Yeah. Are you prepared? <laughs> Have you Tell me now. <laughs> so because of this kind of commitment. Does he fuck? Does he fuck too? No, there's no sex. Like the business has that no would sex. Be, no, but that would be part of the ruse is like, oh, you know, what? she walked in the room at the wrong time. See, you're me, me and your mom, were, we were sexually active and happy. Because of this type of commitment, though, Family Romance assigns its 800 employees to a maximum of five families at a time. <laughs> 800 for five families? <laughs> yeah. This is like half the f families in Wait, Japan. five families be... each? Yeah. For each person. Yeah, you can't have more than five families. After that, you get confused. You start saying That's the wrong That's still a lot of shit. fucking work. It's a lot of families to juggle. <laughs> to be clear, though, he is not playing that specific girl that we mentioned. He's not playing her new dad or her stepdad. He's playing her birth father of the divorced family who she only sees a few times a month. He uses the birth father's name as his own name and says that he's got his own family and that's the reason he can't see her all that often. This is fucked up. <laughs> since Yuichi himself isn't married and doesn't have kids, probably because he doesn't have enough fucking time on his hands, since he's always pretending. He'd have to hire one of his employees for his family. Uh, yeah, so yeah, because he has no experience being a dad, he says that to prepare for the role, he watched a bunch of movies about fathers and cultivated his new personality around those movie dads. Yeah. The mother requested a dad who is kind, who never yells, and who is able to offer wise advice, so that's the kind of dad he is to that girl for around $50 an hour plus expenses. It's a real shame, though, the movie he watched that he learned the most from, Ghost Dad. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you see? As for whether living this kind of lie affects him, uh, Yuichi says it's a business. I'm not going to be her father for 24 hours. It's a set time. When I'm acting with her, I don't really feel that I love her. But when the session is over and I have to go, I do feel a little sad. The kids cry sometimes. They say, why do you have to leave? In those instances, I feel very sorry that I'm faking it. Very guilty. There are times when I am done with the work and I come back home where I sit and watch TV. I find myself wondering, is this now the real me or the actor? I don't think I have an answer. The person that used to be me, is he me now? I know that it's common for actors to feel that way. If you're a really good actor, if you're in it all the time, it feels very unsettling. Yeah, this guy, yes. don't let this guy around you kids. This man, he's, he's losing his fucking he's mind. He's a chameleon. Uh, so he says that he also sometimes has nightmares where, where he tells the truth and says, quote, I'm very sorry. I'm a member of the Family Romance Corporation. I'm not your true father. This is fucking, but. <laughs> Family Romance Corporation? <laughs> yeah, that's the name of the company. Yeah, no, that sounds dystopian as shit. But he, in the in all these dreams that he has repeatedly, he always wakes up right before, right before his fake daughter is able to respond. That's like when you have a death dream and you fall, yeah. or you wake up right <laughs> before you're about to hit the ground. The death of his persona. Oh! <laughs> so, uh, also, it's not just fake dad stuff, though. Sometimes, sometimes he gets hired by white-collar corporate employees, a.k.a. salary men to take responsibility for the mistakes that they've made on the job. Oh, that's fucking great. Now, it's unclear how exactly this works, but he says that he'll accompany the guy who's in trouble to the meeting with the boss where they're supposed to, like, profusely apologize and cry and bow on the ground and shit, but he plays the role of the person who fucked up. Here's the knife. Yeah, so I, I'm not sure... <laughs> 
I don't know if this means that he literally pretends to be the person who made this mistake, like using their name, or just pretends to be a different non-existent employee who's taking the blame, but the whole thing is a weird insight into how weird and dehumanizing the life of a Japanese salary man could be. I love it. Does, is this one called the scapegoat? Who fucked up? Oh, it was this guy. What's your name? Yeah, it was me. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. Ah, uh, yeah, whoops. I'm oh. a real fucking idiot. Good. Oh, sorry. Good. <laughs> And thank I guess you're probably gonna fire me now, right? No, actually, you need to get back to work. And in fact, I'm gonna and make. Thank sure you for bringing this to our attention. <laughs> no, I'm you're gonna, a good one. You, you get back to work, and in fact, I'm gonna come sit right next to you and make sure that you get your job done this week. And then he's stuck doing that. The this, scapegoats. This is gonna cost you extra money. If nothing else, this is a great fucking movie or series idea. Yeah, it's. It's brilliant. Charlie Brooker is writing this episode of Black Mirror. Hey, he right wrote it, now. and then he fucking crumpled it up. He's like, God damn it, they, <laughs> it's already real. Yeah. Ugh. Ugh. The, the first one, very up, Very, very fucked up. Very upset. That girl is going to have severe, a uh, severe emotional crisis and when, when, not if, when the truth comes you're, out. You're talking, you're talking five times, five times 800, and then all of their children, yeah. their children's children who now have fake grandparents. <laughs> oh, by the way, your grandpa, he was an actor. Yeah. For 20 years. Yeah. This whole fucking, they're going to take what? one of those 23andMe tests and shit's going to hit the fan. They, well, Japan. The, the, the scapegoat thing yeah. I love. I love that one. Yeah. That one is fantastic. That, that's good. I fully support it. Yeah. Fully support it. If these companies are so big and dehumanizing that they can't even remember who works for them, it's their fault that people can send in a, a fucking ringer to get yelled at. Ringer to get ringed out. Yeah. I love nah, that. Here, here's the knife. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, well hold on. You can't be serious. <laughs> <laughs> I mean... <laughs> <laughs> come on now. Boss. I mean, yeah, I did delete all the files, but <laughs> come on. I'll go kill myself at home. Or it's like, Bye. or the boss is like, you know what? I've worked in I this like office. I like your honesty. <laughs> yes. I've worked in this office for a decade. <laughs> and every time someone messes up, they try to deflect and blame it on someone else. And then we have, sorry, what's your name? <laughs> Escaped Goatington? Uh, my name, yes. Uh, yes. yes. Man incognito. We have him. I like his... You are promoted. I'll see you at 6 a.m. And we're going out drinking tonight. Yes. Nope, don't go to your desk. We're going right now. Where do you gotta be? I'm your boss. Mm. <laughs> I gotta call my fake family and tell them I'm gonna be late. Hey, where's that, yes. where's that employee I love so much? Jesus. Uh. Oh, okay. Anyways, that company, they have other apologies uh, that they're hired for. Uh, they, they include situations where a woman has cheated on her husband, and the husband demands a confrontation with the guy who cucked him. <laughs> it was me. <laughs> this is literally what it is. <laughs> These people are just like <laughs> emotional punching bags. <laughs> I fucking, I fucking, the workplace one's fine. Everything else is the worst. The worst. It is severely manipulative. Oh, yeah, and it's like the worst kind, too. It's yeah. like, it's gonna make people question years. their own reality. Yeah. Years of emotional They're and mental manipulation. the Truman Show yeah. in real life. But like hyper, like very small, mm -hmm. like, oh my God, it's just so bad. This is, this is, I, it's not long before they turn this into a show in Japan, too. Oh, yeah. And there's going to be, like, the little blocks of people on the bottom. They're going, ah, ha, ha, ha. just laughing at them the whole yeah. time. Oh, jeez. Okay, or, or the wife will hire a man to play the other man, and in order to avoid things getting out of hand, he'll make himself look like a Yakuza gangster. <laughs> you don't fuck with them. Yeah. Yeah. You do not fuck with the Yakuza. Cut your finger off. The guy's probably like, oh, foo, fine. Whoa, hey. Hey, hey. Hey, why don't you fuck her right now in front of me? <laughs> you do what you want. You know what? Prove it. Do it right now in front of me. If I must. <laughs> uh, the husband will yell at him. He'll bow and apologize, and the, and the husband won't pursue the matter further because he's afraid of that doing so will get him killed by the Yakuza, which is true. Smart. <laughs> Good thing on his part. Uh, then, of course, a lot of this work involves pretending to be someone's boyfriend, which, uh, why navigate the dating world when you can just pay a guy to be your ideal boyfriend a few nights a week, minus actually having sex? That's a rhetorical question, though, obviously, because a fake boyfriend isn't a real boyfriend. But, you know, at least for clients of family romance, that distinction isn't so important. Mm -hmm. What is important is appearances, and this can go as far as staging fake weddings to appease a woman's nagging parents who have been asking when the hell she's gonna get married. 
this specific arrangement, apparently not. Did they hire children for the grandkids? I, I don't know how far that one goes. I mean, I'm the sure. Next, that's the next logical step is yeah. like, well, where's my grandchildren? It's a brilliant business because once once the person. Oh, it, it pays once, for itself. Yeah, over once the person has hired you, they're going to have to keep out the it. ruse up for a long time. So for the, yeah. The, for no, the, the, the easy out is like, you, okay, here's the thing. You pay 10 grand right now and I'll kill myself. Like I'll fake kill myself. Yeah. What can I say? He worked himself to death, and then he committed suicide on like, a train. Well, happens it's, all it's the time. Sad, but it's not uncommon in this country. I guess you'll have to find another husband. Yeah. And give me a grandchild. Yeah. So the the fake groom, fake wedding thing, not very common. I think they said they've only done like three of them. But uh, it involves not only the actor playing a groom, but also fifty or so other actors playing his friends and family at the wedding and the reception. That one costs around eighteen thousand dollars. But apparently it's worth it uh, for closeted lesbians who don't want to come out to their parents. Do they, do they need uh, like uh, loud Americans for any of these roles? I'd be happy to move I, to Japan yeah. and, and do this. Yeah. Except for like the whole like weird shit. Like the office one will be fine. Like, yeah, I'm a fucking idiot American. <laughs> you know what I did? I couldn't read all the scribbly scrabbles Where's, and I deleted the, the important file. <laughs> Where's the hamburger vending machine? <laughs> hey. <laughs> Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> what can I say? I'm a fat moron. <laughs> you got me. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Oh, God. Yeah, let me go bit there and be a bumbling, dumb fuck American <laughs> and get paid to do it. I'd be happy to do that. Sorry, everyone. Just making a big scene about it. Uh, anyways, even more depressing, if it could get worse, is the fact that at least one of Family Romance's clients has hired a replacement for his dead wife. They provided a woman that looked like her, who called him by the names his wife used to call him, and who had all the memories and mannerisms listed on the order form for the widower, that, or for the the person that the widower submitted. Uh, in other, in another case, a pregnant woman whose father was about to die realized he would probably die before she gave birth, so she used family romance to rent an infant so he could feel like a grandfather before he passed away. Ban this. <laughs> Ban hey, this. Hey, the, the guy felt felt like a granddad. I can die in peace now. This is my grand. I mean, at least he's dead, and, and there's no possible repercussions. But my God! Also, who's the person at allowing their dead. baby to be Elliot, ready? 2017. <laughs> so, when asked how, why he thinks that this sort of specific uh, business thrives specifically in Japan, Mr. Yuichi said, "The Japanese are not expressive people. There is a communication deficit. In conversation, we do not express ourselves, our opinions, our emotions." Others come first before our own desires. The family size is diminishing too. Families used to be larger. Now, you eat alone. <laughs> wow. But hey guys, we don't want you to eat alone. Yeah, before we get into the second <laughs> half of this show, with the headlines, we've got a sponsor for this week, and it's Omaha Steaks. The holidays are fast approaching, and if you're like us, picking out gifts for everyone on your list can be a chore. But for that special carnivore in your life, Omaha Steaks is a great choice. So if you've never received a package from Omaha Steaks, you basically, you get a, a huge box of different cuts of meat along with a few sides shipped right to your door, ready to cook into delicious meals to share with your friends and family and prove once and for all that you are a master of the grill. Now for you guys and gals out there, if you go to omahasteaks.com and enter code WEIRDNEWS into the search bar, you'll get the family gift pack for just $49.99. That is a 75% discount. This special exclusive offer for you gets you a ton of delicious meat. Let's run down that inventory. Two filet mignons. Two top sirloins. Two boneless pork chops. Two boneless chicken breasts. Four kielbasa sausages. Four burgers. Four potatoes al gratin. Four caramel apple tartlets. One Omaha steak seasoning packet. Plus, they'll throw in four additional kielbasa sausages for free. You Just know because you, you watch sausages. this show. And good luck getting all that for just $49.99 anywhere else without even having to leave the house. Now get yourself or someone you care about, your dad, your mom, your uncle, your aunt, you got a big family. Uh, give them the family gift pack by going to omahasteaks.com, entering code WEIRDNEWS, all one word in the search bar. You'll save 75%. Again, omahasteaks.com, enters code WEIRDNEWS into the search bar. It's the gift guaranteed to be a hit. I took my culinary skills that I learned with our Blue Apron integration, and I was able to cook up some Omaha steaks it just really last is. month. Being able to cook a steak properly is a skill that is not a lot of people have. And if you have it, you will be you will gain respect. Easy to learn, peers. hard to master. Yeah. If you live in an apartment, I highly suggest 
getting a cast iron skillet mm -hmm. and disconnecting the smoke alarms for just a little bit. Just like if you put, put them Open back right the when you're done. Open the windows up. Open the windows. Then uh, you put, but as soon as you're done cooking the steak, plug those things back in. Another uh, thing, uh, <laughs> I really I want, I would love it if it, people love shouting fake news. I would love people to shout weird news. Yeah. Weird news. Weird news. <laughs> Speaking of weird news, let's get into the headlines. Yeah. Psychologist says listening to Christmas music too early can harm your mental health. And I, I think, agree. I think the mental health problems are already there if you're listening to Christmas music in July. Well... Yes. Weird news! <laughs> that is, I think they meant more like November. For, I don't know. Uh, so nah, November's fine. Apparently, it uh, it can stress some people out because they're like, oh, God, Christmas is coming. I got to do all these things. But it's like, no, it's actually two months away. You got plenty of time. But reminding people of all their responsibilities. Like, I parents, have no like, oh, fuck, I got to buy gifts for my kids. As soon as Halloween's done, it's fine. Go into the Christmas no. stuff because the lead up's the best part. No. As soon no. as it's Christmas, it's over. Got By the time it. Christmas comes, I'm fucking sick of it. Nah, I like it. It's terrible. I love Christmas. Two weeks. You should get yeah. two weeks of Christmas. Two weeks? You madman. Two weeks. You can be down at the Steinmart getting all the leftovers. <laughs> oh, I guess my friends and family are going to have to deal with this magnetic puzzle once again. In the court of Elliot, any Christmas uh, displays, music, anything? Two weeks? Before... What? Okay, I'll give you... For all you hardcore... All you hardcore Santa fans, you can start blasting the music December 1st. Okay. December 1st. All right, that's fair. But if I hear any of that in November, jail. Next headline, uh, we mentioned this earlier, but here it is again. On last day of work, Twitter employee deactivates President Trump's account. Yeah, which is hilarious on the one <laughs> And terrifying on the other. Yeah, hilarious, ha, ha they did it. And then like, oh God, one fucking rogue employee at Twitter could do, anything. Could do that. Yeah. That's fucking terrifying. And if it wasn't for Trump, like, you, no one would have ever known. Also, this guy might go to jail. Apparently what he did is illegal. Not just because Trump was president. That just amplifies it. But uh, it does apparently fall under the rules of... Uh, Murder? Laws against hacking. Yeah. So... Because he technically wasn't an employee at the time or something? He was like No, away. it's just like he, he violated... Uh, I don't know. There's all these... Antitrust? I, I don't know. I'm not a fucking lawyer. I and all. Knife wielding man with porn magazine armor arrested after allegedly attempting to stab ex neighbor. Ex -neighbor. You can't hurt me. <laughs> yeah, this guy. So they both lived in a trailer park. This guy, the one with the porn armor, he thought that his neighbor had gotten him kicked out of the trailer park by complaining or something, which he probably did, and he probably deserved it. So he went to the guy's trailer at night to challenge him to a knife fight to settle the score. But he came prepared. Was the pornography on the outside of his clothes or on? It was on the inside. It was well, duct taped to his body. Well, that's fine. Mm -hmm. That's fine. I don't know. That, I think it's unfair. Uh, you, you gotta, if you're gonna get in a knife fight that you knowingly planned, it's okay to take precautions. You're not letting the other guy. And then when you get stabbed armor, and you're dying, you got a little time to check one one last little page out. <gasps> uh, the blood. Not enough blood. <laughs> not enough blood for an erection. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> Would you die faster because the blood fills your dick? I don't know. It takes the blood away from the wound. Sounds like a question for Neil deGrasse Tyson. If you ever get stabbed, just get a boner afterwards. It'll take the blood Ooh, away from the wound. Yeah, suck the blood dick. back into your body. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like a like a straw. Exactly. Yep. It's exactly just like that. Yeah, it's like when you get a snake bite and you have to suck the poison out. Just yeah. keel over and suck your own dick till you stop bleeding. Or die. It's happy. Yeah. Speaking of elaborate lies... Man fakes death to prove wife hired a hitman to kill him. I mean, it's a, it's, it's a plan that works. In he this caught case, wind of it, and so, he faked it to have her be like, ah, the deed is done. That's what they did. So this one, so the guy, the guy was like a boxing coach. His wife wanted to kill him to get his money or some shit. She, the guy that she approached, just by coincidence, happened to have been... And it, both an ex-con, so he's like, this guy kills. But then he was also a former, like, boxing student of the husband. So the guy let the husband know. The guy, the husband gave the guy a tape recorder to go to the meeting to record it. They got all the evidence. They went to the police, and the police were like, yeah, it's a pretty open and shut case, but what if we faked your death? What if we got our best makeup artist in there, <laughs> we put you in a ditch out in the desert, drew a little bullet hole on your head, took the pictures, Brought the pictures to the wife and just see how she reacts. And, and he like, was like, okay. and he was like, wait, so this, my wife that wants to kill me, I fucking hate her, obviously. You mean I also get to emotionally manipulate her? Yeah. Fucking great. Yes. And then they clapped. <laughs> like, hey, bravo. Hey, ma'am, killed your husband. Check it out. And she's like, oh, that's fucking great. You know what else? 
There's a camera over there. Uh, yeah, and he should walk in. You're like, do yes. you really think it's funny? Yes. Why don't you have a seat right over there? Why don't you have a seat? <laughs> <laughs> that should be a new show, too. Did you really say? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I like this idea. That'd be a great show. Yeah. And and the victim, the victim of the gaslighting in this case, deserves it. Yeah. Not an innocent chi- Japanese child who doesn't have a father. And it's the, a murderous yeah. woman. Yeah, that's yeah. fine. It's this is gaslighting I can get behind. Mm-hmm. Man shot himself in penis while robbing hot dog stand. Police say. <clears throat> and it shot off and it blew and landed right. Well, in the where, what do you what do you do if, <laughs> if that happens? Because then you're bleeding from your dick. Don't get a boner. Yeah, you can't. If you get a boner, it, it'll shoot out like a geyser. Don't show me any porn! <laughs> yeah. Get the porn away! Just twist my nipples instead. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, the man shot his dick. Yeah. At a hot dog stand. Yeah. And then he just took a hot dog and jammed it in the floppy hole that was left. This is my new dick. <laughs> a Chicago dog. I'm gonna hire a small Japanese man to pretend to be my dick for the next 20 years. <laughs> <laughs> they'll let you do anything. <laughs> Bro, the Japanese, if you give them enough money, they'll do anything. This guy's been playing my dick for 30 years. All right, give me the money. All right, here we go. I'm your dick. <laughs> Court rules zoo can't let kids swim with crocodiles anymore. Oh. Goddamn liberals taking yeah. away my kid's right to swim with crocodiles. Yeah. This was the thing? Yeah, apparently in Germany where I, they had a zoo and it, there was a trainer there to oh, supervise case, all yeah. of it. But they're like, hey, kids, get in the swamp with the crocodiles. Hey. And then the fucking... Lamestream Angela Merkel globalist German government, they're like, no, you can't swim with crocodiles anymore. We when, gotta put up a barrier. When I was a kid, uh at a, at a state park, they would let you swim in the like the lake there, but obviously there's tons of alligators. Right. But their solution for keeping you separate from the alligators was they just uh they ran a net across a certain part of it. Which doesn't make any sense because they could just get on land and walk around it and then get in the water and you wouldn't know. Yeah. Or they could just bite through the net or go over the top of it. Uh, but yeah, we used to play a game where it was like the uh, how brave are you and you'd swim out and like touch the net and then swim back. It's dangerous. How brave are you? <laughs> Touched one. And I'm still here. Yeah. Stupid alligators. It's Me one, you zero. Sure, I touched the net. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Make some money. <laughs> <clears throat> German police pulled Python out of man's pants after noticing considerable bulge. And it was actually just a Japanese man. Too many reptiles over in Germany. You'd think it'd be too cold. Southern yeah. Germany? He had a... Uh... It's a real anaconda, I swear. <laughs> okay, hey, buddy. Stop touching my dick. <laughs> no. yeah, yeah, he was just hiding it. There was well, apparently, the, the, there's a lot of questions here about whose snake it was, why he was hiding it in his pants. Yeah, there's lots but, of questions. You know, they found it. And now he's in jail. Mm. Right. Fear squashed zucchini mistaken for World War II bomb in Germany. Was it one of those giant it was big zucchini? Yeah, yeah. Makes and sense. is it Berlin? They still dig up bombs all the fucking time. Anytime they start a building project, they're like, "Oh God damn it, another fucking American bomb that we gotta haul. We gotta evacuate the neighborhood and call in the fucking bomb squad to get it out of here." Mm-hmm. Jeez, big problem. So yeah, this person <clears throat> digging in their garden, they're like, "Oh my God, it's a bomb!" But it was just a big they were zucchini. Really successful. It was just a prize-winning zucchini. Yeah. Gold star. Venezuelan president eats empanada on live TV while addressing starving nation. Well, hold on. <laughs> Guys, we, uh, you know, we all got to tighten our... We're all our, making sacrifices. We all got to tighten our belt a little bit. There's not enough food to go... Not enough food to go around, so... Uh, was there a bet on whether or not he'd do it? No. <laughs> and his name was Wayne Shaw. Yeah. yeah. Five nude suspects in custody after two vehicle collisions south of Edmonton. Were there? Both cars had naked people in it, or just one? Mm, I thought they might, but no. Mm. The headline makes it appear, though. No, the five naked people were just in one of the cars. Okay. It's like apparently below Was freezing in Edmonton, bus? though. I don't a bang know. Bang bus. I don't know. They Could said be. that alcohol and drugs were suspect, suspected to be a okay. factor. So they wrecked the bang bus. Yeah, probably. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Man sentenced to four years in prison for sending strippers to his neighbor's front porch about thirty times a year. It's a prank. And then they stole all his guns. Yeah. Well, this is <laughs> this guy. It was apparently his fetish. He would hire prostitutes, but he didn't want to have sex with them. He wanted to see them go to his neighbor's house and take their clothes off. So he would be watching him? from the window, like, yeah, ah. yeah, they're stripping in front of my neighbor's house. It's weird. No, stay away from my house. He did this a lot. The neighbors finally were just like, 
Hey, buddy. What's going on here? So, yeah. Now he's in jail. Mm, all right. Sorry. Anyway, that's it for uh, this week's Weekly Weird News. Yeah. Um, yeah. Watch our other stuff over here. Yeah. Tech News Day. We got a, a live stream you should check out. Mm-hmm. Um, Wait, no, we don't. <laughs> no, no, no. We do at the beginning. Oh, of that the, live stream. But go to twitch.tv slash etc underscore show and follow us there because we yeah. live stream there a whole lot more. The ETC party time is banned from live streaming on YouTube. Banned so Twitch it is. All right. See you guys. Bye. <laughs>